about and things to discuss. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, okay, um, some things have happened over the last few days that have not really pleased me, and that's part of the lecture today, because you're going to help me out, you're going to ask some questions, answer some questions for me, and all that good stuff, because we have a theory that we're going to deal with, and I'm going to have this out-of-body experience that I know we have. So, Ms. E, we ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Charlie, what shall I do? Two o'clock? What? Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. Today's lecture is going to deal with blaming the victim, rape culture, and two o'clock in the morning. Okay. We're going to start off with 2 o'clock in the morning because let's get this party started right now. Club it. Okay. All right. Not in your text. We're going to deal with it. What's the 2 o'clock in the morning theory? When blaming the victim, the sexual assault and rape arises. Why are victims at a location at 2 o'clock in the morning? That's, that, that's the question that always comes up. Okay. Why were you there at 2 o'clock? And they're very specific. Maybe that's what time in Arizona the clubs closed. But they always, they're very specific. Why was she over at his house at 2 in the morning? Okay. Why was she there? They should know what can occur at that time and location if they're present. Maybe if she wasn't present, she wouldn't have never been raped. It's a two o'clock in the morning theory. Okay? They were asking for something to occur. Thus, you can't prosecute. Okay, you can't prosecute. It's two o'clock in the morning, Tank. Two o'clock. Two a.m. Two a.m. theory. Know it, learn it, understand it. That's that theory. You see at the bottom tank, if you were there at the location, the victims know, that means they can't be prosecuted. Cannot be prosecuted. Because you were there at 2 o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> that's an opinion or that's like a legit legal thing? That's a theory? Uh -oh that sometimes Mr. Partia becomes fact because it was at 2 o'clock in the morning. <coughs> you shouldn't have been there. You shouldn't have been present. Location puts you there. You know who you were dealing with. He don't have a good reputation. Thus, don't even think about bringing it to court. It's your fault. It's 2 o'clock in the morning theory. Did I leave anything out, Mr. Alex? Yeah, how dumb that is. Well, I didn't know you were changing me. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> I was wondering, hold on. We're going to do ladies first, Alex, to hold that thought. Now, you said how dumb this is. Do you want me to write the word logic up here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would okay. really like that. Okay, that way you can't say that. Okay. I was going to send you an email to you and say, look, we're going to be dealing with great calls from the 2 o'clock in the morning theory. That way you. So why, why does this bother you so much? Because just because they were there at 2 a.m. doesn't mean that they deserve the rape or they sh could have known. Victims know if they were there, they're expected. To be raped? So anywhere I go at 2 a.m., I should expect to be raped. Yeah, right? I should you should know... The situation. But that makes it okay for it to happen in the first place. Does that place? make it okay? Does that make it okay? It doesn't. In the it eyes doesn't. of a defense attorney, Miss McCray, it makes it fine because you should know. You should be intelligent enough to know. You shouldn't have to prepare yourself for that. You should be intelligent enough to know you should not be there at 2 o'clock in the morning. What if you're just getting up late? 
If you're just getting off work, you should go home and go to bed, What's Stewie. There until in the Stewie, you should go to bed. What's the difference between you going to bed and you walk out the door if you're walking? That's no. all right. There's There's always always a I'm getting all these sidebars. Hold on. Hold on. I called on Alex. He hasn't said nothing yet. He's waiting. What is he waiting on? He's never waited before. What is the problem? Is he sick? Is he worried? The two o'clock in the morning theory's got him. It's, it's, it's cyber still. The two o'clock in the morning. That theory, it might sound crazy, but it's not because it's used quite frequently in courtrooms, K Smith. Two o'clock in the morning. Two. In the morning, I was waiting for the sister from Wisconsin. You have something to say, Miss Wilson? Um, what if it's your house? Like, what if you were at your house? At my house? Yeah, at two o'clock. It's your house. Leave me there anytime you would like, obviously. But it's two o'clock in the morning. What if you were at your house minding your own business, or like maybe you invited a couple friends over? Then why would that be a problem if that's your house? I got this. I got this. Oh. <laughs> I have a different. I got this. Okay. Give me that. Then I'm coming home. I just make sure you didn't forget. Come on. Not about you. If it's my house, I shouldn't have went to bed. What about where you're in bed? If it was my house, the door should have been locked. That's just really important. If it's my house, I forgot I gave him a key. What do you think? It was my house. You said it was my house? Yeah. I went to bed. I went to bed. Yes, Ms. Flake. Um, uh, Tay asked a good question um, earlier that she said, what's the difference between 2 a.m. and 2 p.m.? So well, she just kind of said it, just as a okay. side comment. Um, but it made me think, are they, do they compare at all the 2 a.m. theory to, um, what's the word I'm looking for, like lack, lack of awareness as if you were kind of like, what they're having alcohol consumption as well? What they're comparing it to is, why are you there at that time? You should be at home or somewhere else. You should know the reputation of the person that you're dealing with. A lot of times, if they put the onus on you. Well, I know, but, perpetrate I know, but what I'm still saying, though, is because it's so late at night, are mm -hmm. they still also using <coughs> a, a theory that because you are not fully conscious, <coughs> that you cannot be well, accountable for your actions or something? Well, I think with that time, it goes back to... Even if you were an alcohol component, well, it's right. that you should be, you should know what you're doing. Right. And this goes back to attacking the character of the victim, yeah. blaming them. It was their fault. They were at that location at that time with that individual, and they should know that if you are there at that time, then what happens to you, it's on you. Tay and then Miss Wilson. Okay, so it's okay. It's not okay to rape during the day, but it's okay to rape during night, is what you're saying. And also, where do men come into this that get raped at 2 a.m.? I'm glad you asked that question. We're going to get to that. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, it wasn't it's not a question, but like, I've heard like Southern and like older people say, like, nothing's open past 12 a.m. besides lights and, and like in the ER. So. To me, I think that kind of stems from that, with the old school way of thinking. But I don't. I think that at two o'clock you can do something like productive. I don't think two a.m. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's a connotation of okay, well you're up late, like you're doing something that you're not supposed to be doing that you could be doing at like noon. But I think the connotation of two a.m. is bad. But I don't think the actual timing has anything to do with anything. Well, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Like I say, the whole thing is about the, the time and then the location and then who you're with. So it's like, you should know that. Now, you mentioned what's the difference between 2 and 2.30. That's even more of an issue. We just start off with 2 o'clock in the morning, dude. You know. Go ahead, Ms. Clark. Uh, mine whole kind of thing is, like, I think they're kind of similar. Like, us all having free will, you can do or go wherever you want at 2 a.m. However, if somebody were to review, well, you have free will to rape, it's not 
necessarily the same decision you could be making. Right. I can go and do whatever I want at whatever time that I please, but I don't expect to be taken advantage of, nor do I appreciate it no. at all. <laughs> you don't appreciate that at all. That was that was a not my best phrasing, but <laughs> <laughs> well, all you guys have valid arguments. Okay, hold on, Mr. Pontu. Yeah, it's just kind of like it's a sad reality of it, but bad things happen at night. You know, that's why parents teach their kids to be home at night, and so I mean. And you know that that is brought up when the defense attorney yeah. is bringing that forward. But you're, this is in relation to adults, like, mm -hmm. so it doesn't necessarily apply. But I, I mean, it's a fine line that they're drawing. You know, it's sure it is. It's tricky. Okay, and I think a point that's being missed here is that this defense of what were you doing there at that time is not necessarily a defense to get the defendant, the rapist, um, off the hook and say, oh, it was fine for him to do that. It's more of an attack on the victim That's right. in that I'm going to drag you down with this. That's correct. It's defaming the person who was raped less than, oh, it's okay to rape at 2 a.m. That's not the point of this defense. No, it's not. It's just to bring that other person That's down. Correct. Because there's other things that I could have put up here, which I have on another over here. Okay, go ahead, Tay. I feel like less bad things would happen at night if um, they started prosecuting the rapist who raped at 2 a.m. Well, when well that, isn't that the ideal that's not happening? When yeah. It's, <laughs> when it's dark out, it's That's what I'm saying. So if this wasn't a thing, like if victim blaming, blaming wasn't a thing, then like... Uh, I disagree. I think the dark, it's its not that we've placed the stigma on the dark with this. The dark has always been a bad thing in the yeah. human psyche. Always. That's thats when bad things happen for thousands of years. It's not in the last 200 where we're saying, what were you doing at 2 a.m.? It's just always been a bad time. Yeah. Where is Shane? Um, I'm not trying to like victim blame, but I think Something that's kind of missing here is I do agree that you should be able to, you know, go out and do whatever you want at any time of the day. But I think having the logic behind it that, like, I'm invincible and nothing's going to happen to me or should happen to me, I think it's kind of a logical thinking. Because there are bad people out there, bad things are going to happen, and you kind of just need to have some common sense and where you're going to go and what you're going to do. You have the free will to do what you want, but you kind of need to be like ready to accept the consequences of what could happen and what has been happening in society for hundreds of years. But rape happens at 2 p.m. too. So no, I know, I know. But I'm just saying that you shouldn't have to live in fear. Okay. Alex? So my, my, nep my nephew asked me this question. And he was like, he his question was this. He was like, so... If it's so, at first I had to explain to him what, like, what it meant to like, be, uh, like, have a sister, like, which she's, you know, she's a little older and she's getting ready to go into high school, or whatever. And so he's in eighth grade, but he asked me, he said, What do I do if my sister gets raped? And I said, Okay, that's an interesting question. I don't know why he asked me this. But, um, he, I was like, okay, well, uh, what do you want to do? What, what, what do you think you would do? He was like, I don't know what I would do because I feel like nothing would happen. Nothing would happen to, to the, the person. person. Right, to the person that did. Per and, so, okay. and so my question is, so I guess the question I have is, um, what, does society care? What time is the game? What game? Oh. So I mean, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, so I mean, we're talking about it right now. We're we're talking about it. I mean, uh, yeah. just as a whole, do they care? It's diffusion of responsibility. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah I mean, but it's clogged. 
um, bringing it back to earlier comments. I appreciate the whole like common sense, yeah, being out at 2 a.m., not necessarily the most safe thing, but a lot of rapes and sexual assaults happen with people you know, too. So if you're hanging out with a good friend into the late hours of the night and they take advantage of you, there's no common sense with that because they weren't a good friend. And there's a lot of situations like that, too. So just saying, oh, you shouldn't be out at 2 a.m., it's more of common sense. It's very... It's Once situational. Gray, that's right? what it is. Very, very situational. situational. Oh, Mr. Part 2. Uh, that's the reason why when I'm a father, if I'm a father, and I have kids, you better, you can bet they're going to be home before it's dark out. You know, I'm going to enforce that for real because okay. it's just a form of protection. But what happens if you can't enforce it? The question you can't force your kids to do anything. Go ahead, Alex. <laughs> Go ahead, Alex. It's not going to turn out well for their future. Go ahead, Alex. <laughs> um, so, I, so maybe I have, I have another question. Just, and the reason why is because I don't. I'm, I'm still trying to grasp this whole thing. Why? I know why people do it. It's just hard to wrap your mind around why they want to do it. What's that? About why why people decide to blame the victim. I understand why it happens, but but. But the question I have is this. Is, um, when it comes to this thing called common sense and, you know, doing what you're supposed to do and maybe not, like, what would you guys, what, what would you all say if there was a person that put themselves in a questionable situation, knowing that there is, that this is a consequence, that this could happen, but they went there anyway. Okay, they, but, do, it, they do it a lot. But then after it happens, right, a lot of times... Then they want to say, like, oh, then they say, okay, well, this is this. Now, I know people have opinions about that, but what what do you have to say? Because if someone puts themselves in a situation where there is question, there, it's a questionable situation, but you decided to be there on your own court, right. Alex, what do you do? Alex, people put themselves not knowing those situations mm -hmm. might occur. Right. But regardless... They still should not be violated. Right, that's what I'm saying. But okay, but what I'm saying is, what what do you think happens when people hear that? Like, not not us. We understand that that's not right. But what do you think that happens when the majority of people hear that? Oh, you're in a questionable situation. And then, because the reason I'm, I'm saying it like that is because that's how it's told. That's true. They were in a questionable situation. But going, not, going back to what Dave said, right. it's not about. Would you say it's not about, um, it's about muddying up the bit? Yeah. It's That's what it boils down to. And see, something else I didn't put on there, but I have on another overhead, is what was she wearing? Oh, the damn, she was naked. Yeah. That don't give you right. Yeah. No, uh -huh. no, 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 wait a minute. No, no. I, wait, I wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't understand wait this minute. question. Wait a minute. Excuse because me. there's another, t there's just something else up here. Men on trial. This is something Charlie and I talked about yesterday. Because I had a student that asked questions. Do you have questions, classes where you discuss women's issues? I said, yeah, talk about it all the time. Decisions that women make. And I told them, men are on trial. Now, what are they on trial for? Well, I could say, Charlie, you want me to say why men are on trial? Or you want to say it? You want me to say it? All right. Why, let me ask you this. Why do you think men are on trial right now? In what? Right now, at this point, why are men on trial? Politics. Politics. What politics? President elect. Hmm? President elect. Mr. Trump. Yeah. Oh, you didn't know men were on trial? Oh, for what? What are men on trial for? Go ahead, Sean. It's worth noting that this isn't within the whole of American society. This is within marginalized groups, including women, LGBT, and people of color. Just to throw that out there, that is the communities where men are on trial. Sounds like the word. Go ahead. Oh, 
Um, we'll come back to you. Okay, so men on trial. Never thought about it that way. So nobody knows. No, they never been this quiet. So you don't know why men are on trial. It's a vague question. Yeah. It's a vague question, really. Yes. It's That's a vague question. That's the other one. When you ask me about the. Big subject. The one oh, that one. You. The one your wife asked you. Oh, I wanted to say that one to Thursday. Come on. It relates heavily to this particular question. You do this, for me. You do this all to me all the time. Go on. But wait a minute, uh, because I'm going to get to that one, because um, you said it's a big question. Okay. <laughs> President-elect Donald Trump has been accused of inappropriate behavior. Mm -hmm. It's on video. Mm -hmm. So he's been elected the President of the United States. Thus, many people feel that his behavior was legitimized, endorsed. It's okay to do and say things that to women. Both of them were under investigations for various things. You can say that, and that's true. But we're not talking about her. So it's about right. him. Right. He was. But isn't that the point why are men on trial, right? Men on trial because so a lot of man, people. So we can't look at her. No, no, no. <laughs> she <laughs> hasn't been. He, he's saying that <laughs> men are on trial because there's a, there's a, right. What he's saying to her is that men are on trial because there's a man who's doing these things, and it was and everybody else. So 50, 60, 60 million people said that's okay. <laughs> it's okay because they voted well, yeah, for. They the voted for. Thing. Voting for him so because of individual no, things. Men it, we, yeah, because a lot of people, Muhammad, Miss Flake, you don't have to like it. It's what it is. And a lot of people feel it's okay. Because this guy, if the president does it, it's okay. I'm not Mr. Pontier. I don't believe that. What I'm saying is that's what a lot of people believe. It's all right to say those things. To do those things? It's all right. Who believes that? I have nobody in this class believes that. That's this class. There are people that have been victimized even before. Now, it's all right. It's okay. Ten year old, they asked why he did what he did to his fellow classmate. He said, the president does that. Like <laughs> that's, that's a valid thing. He said this. But when you had hold on, Muhammad. When you have women waiting at the bus stop, said, I'm gonna grab you in your vaginal area. You didn't say vaginal area. Either. It's so what? People will always try to justify their past. They sure will. Not because again. Any excuse. That's right. I don't like it, but it's what it is. And a lot of people feel it's okay. So, man, man, I'm great, Mom. I agree with you and all that, but. Um, you know, no, Muhammad, I don't like that. I don't. I don't, but it, I makes, don't like it. makes sense. Because yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a fan the, of it at all. Your president, the person you're looking for, actually said all this stuff, so it could be. So take a regular thing for you to say, I understand that part. But you're putting men on trial, but not only men voted for Trump. That's true. So you can't put. That's right. right. That's not. And that's you put true. men on trial. That's. That's true. That's, but. That's, mm, that's true. But if you think about how individuals think, you have people that are not okay. If you are of a certain race or a certain then you must have voted. And you got to think the mindset of the people. Continue. Okay. 
Are you putting men on trial that I'm not putting nobody on trial. Oh, by that thing on the road. Yeah, I wrote that. That's yeah. correct. Right. You, there is a I asked the question. <laughs> okay. Uh huh. So that means men did something wrong, right? Or there is something wrong that should be fixed. With, yeah. Right? That's, we started right Why now. don't you put Americans on trial? That will make I can do that sense. too. But well, we talk about men, so don't don't you do that to me. Don't you don't don't you do it because you got I started going in all directions. No, we focusing on men. We talk about blaming the dick. This is something wrong. No, 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 it is. It's an opinion. It's not. Uh huh. It's not a fact. So I don't mind it. It's not my thing. It's yours. <laughs> but that's okay. I can have. Go ahead, Miss Clark. Um, I thought it was very interesting that you brought up that not only men voted for Trump, and very small anecdote, mm -hmm. my sister and I are polar opposites. I mean, we look very similar, but everything is wildly off. And she voted for Trump. Mm -hmm. And so we were, we were discussing it in a little bit of a, a tense situation, but um, she had the mentality, because I was telling her how Trump, he was racist and sexist, and he's only cares for women if they can do something to please him and she immediately spewed out basically everything that is tied in with victim blaming and rape culture like on the side of not women and it was so scary to think about and hear coming from my sister just like these ideals that you'd only hear from men that think women are their right and this is how she thought so, I mean, it's like, yes, not only men voted for Trump, but a lot of those women have similar victim-blaming women against women ideals. Well, you, if you think about it, if you break it down demographically, you had 53% of white women voted for Trump. You had over 20% of black people voted for Trump. You had um, over 20% of Latino males voted for Trump. You had all these different groups who voted for Trump. What was their education level? I don't know that. Oh, I don't, <laughs> Sorry. I don't know that. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know that. Well, okay. there's actual demographics. Right. <laughs> no, like, listen. It's about the, Hold on. I'm not trying to be, like, straight up rude, but actually there are demographics of the people without college degrees who voted for Trump. The women with college degrees and who they voted for. The men with doctorates and who they voted for. And it's straight up like listed. Well, There's a lot of a lot of women who voted for Trump um, have college degrees. Okay, before I go, on, Marge, you had your hand up, uh, and I just oh no, it was something else earlier. Okay, um, so this whole thing, um, it was that whole two a.m. theory. Okay, Mike Tyson. No, but yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and what the girl exactly. did, etc. <laughs> See. You want to throw out these issues, um, and like I said, we ask about um, is it, um, Mr. Trump. We have to deal with this because it's out there. We have to. So what is great culture? Is it gender specific? Is it gender specific? Okay. No, it's not. Because... Shannon going to tell you about men. And that's the thing that really, and I said I was going to get to that, that's the thing that really gets to me. No, no, I'll tell you what it is. Because we, we guys, we're dudes, we say it's sodomized. It's right. It's right. Just say it what it is. But we don't want to say that because we're men. We got guys that don't even like talking about going to get their prostate checked. Mm -hmm. You gotta really talk them into. <laughs> you gotta do this, man. You still want you wanna be here for the duration? No, I, I just can't let them and they don't want to get a colonoscopy. Okay? Because it's going. My wife has a theory. You know, now you know how women feel. Okay. So this whole thing. Is rape is acceptable practice throughout larger society. Now, if I'm wrong, you tell me. Why do we have rape culture? 
You guys watch the documentary dealing with the sports teams. We're going to meet Mr. Broom. Okay. We're going to meet Mr. Broom. Remember Mr. Broom? <clears throat> yeah. That's right, man. I mean, that's, that's what it is, man. Part of this expected and accepted practice. That's why I asked, what time is the game? That's a throwaway line where we want to say, change the subject or we letting you know that it's okay if a star football player. Who was the number one draft pick in the night 2015 NFL draft? James Winston. What did he do when he was at Florida State? Other than the crab, still the crabs and the crab legs and all that stuff. To get to the side. What else did he do? Oh, when he jumped on the table? Yeah. 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 He jumped on the table. You ain't got to repeat what he <laughs> said, but yeah. <laughs> Effort in the imaginary area. Um, yeah, he said that. But James Winston, he was the number one draft pick of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last year. With all this information that they had at his disposal, he still drafted him number one. Still drafted him. He, he was suspended for a game and showed up. He was Didn't he show up in uniform? He was suspended for a half. Half a game. And they made it a game. And game. He showed up in uniform. And he showed up in uniform, expecting to play. <laughs> And you ask this question, rape culture? Tell you something about rape culture all the way. Because it's part of the culture. It's okay. It's all right. No, it's not okay. okay. Sit. But we have to discuss it. Go ahead, Dave. In that very specific example, I think a lot of why that is, um, it's just sensational. Which, which example? Of jumping up on the table and uh, you, saying, yeah, yeah, saying that. What are you saying? It's it's sensationalist. They did it for a reason. It gets views. People are going to watch because of that. That, that that's that's saying that says a lot about society. Consumers. Yeah. Yeah. We when all you watched go, it. Said what? There you go. Supposedly we all watched. It. I didn't. I didn't hear about this, but we yeah. all watched it. We gave the views. I'm we okay. fed into what, it. What was was he the rookie of the year? Alex, was he the rookie of the year? Yeah. We all watched him play football. We didn't play <clears throat> that says a lot about us. Pretty twisted. Go ahead, Emma. It's like how people are like, I can't believe Donald Trump won. Well, nobody's shut up about him since he entered the race. Because every single day something else comes up and, oh, he did this. Well, you're just putting his face out. You kept putting out his words and his ideas out into the world more and more and more and then everyone kept on eating it. But you know what's sad is that the, the women that came out, you think they didn't know about these women before? They knew. But they were told, you work at the network, you work at the network here, I'm going to give you you got all this explosive allegations about Mr. Trump and your supervisor. This is a real dude. Let's move back to the CBS. You, you got Emmy Awards. Past 10 years, he calls you in his office. You want to report this story. He tells you you need to sit on this one. You got these powerful allegations about the Republican nominee for president. And he tells you, <clears throat> you can't report that. That went on in different networks, not just for him, but with his opponent too. You need to stay quiet. Until they will get the most views. Hmm? Until it will get the most views. Until it gets the most views. And then, just before, 60 to 90, 60 to 90 days before the November 8th, that's when all the stuff started coming out. And people were eating it up. And I'm saying to myself, yeah, where, where was all this reporting when he announced? Where was all this reporting? See, I, I think wow. Donald Trump's reporting is, is, is awesome. It's great because it. We're talking about it. it. It's great because it's so ironic that the media made him president at the same time. The media was trying to not make it better. It's wonderful because they got to eat crow 
about what yeah. they do. Yeah, they do. They've done it to they did it to Obama. They even did it to Bush. Even they did mm-hmm. Bush did things that they didn't like. Mm-hmm. They tried to just destroy him. I love him. I still I, look. That's the one thing I can take from this. I, I look. I'm still looking for some of the people who said he would never be president. And, and in fact, the current president is one of them. He said it over and over. And I'm saying to myself, buddy, you just have no clue. You, you going to find out. you going to see. And I was trying to prepare you guys for this. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I think it just goes to show, too, that the media controls everything really? in society. I think the media has a huge influence. And I, we were just talking about this in um, my social psych class like an hour ago about how um, levels of aggression are greatly influenced by the things that we watch on TV and that we what we watch the celebrities doing. Because, I mean, I think if we're going to talk about rape culture, we need to talk about where this comes from and where, you know, what the influence is. Who do you think the influence is? I think it's a lot of things. I think it's dysfunctional homes. I think it's, um, I think it's the influence that we see on the media. I think it's alcohol. I think it's drugs. I think it's a whole combination. A horrible crap. Because just like this should be, I, I, I can't understand the Carl's Jr. commercial where they got the person eating. He did. Oh, yeah, he did. and they got the bikini on. Yeah, I'm like, what is it? I mean, it's for my appetite. It just, I don't get it. But, but this is part of the culture. Now, folks, we talk about rape culture is perpetuated going there at um, Shen family. Position of power, employment, education, religion, military, athletics. You talk about the media. One of the stories that's not being reported, underreported stories, is there was a gymnastics coach, U.S. Olympic, who was molesting some of those young ladies. Underreported stories, like the documentary I showed you guys with the, with the um, initiation that goes on. With these four scenes, okay, you can't talk about those things. Is there anything that we can add to this up here in reference to the clues? Is, is there anything that we left off? Music. The, the media, music. yes. The media, what else? You said what? Music. Music, oh, most definitely. The casting couch in Hollywood, okay. Oh yeah, most definitely. Using some of those um, executives, most definitely. Is I think that, history is one too. What? History. History? Yeah, because people, I mean, it, it could go into education too, but I think if people are looking at the history of society or the history of race and stuff, I think people will take that as they, well, they could do it, I can do it. And then you got your superstitious people that say history repeats itself. <laughs> you said if well, I can do it, if they can do it, I can do it. So this is why, uh, like this, yeah, Charles, you got something? Politics now out there. Now our president Politics. Those people. Politics. This, this ties in. Politics, yes. Anything else that we we did not add up here in reference to rape culture? Okay, but what else? Stewie? Okay. Anything that we can add up here? So what? The medical, the medical field, yes. Ms. Clark? Um, I don't know necessarily the umbrella term, but like uh, the police force. And law enforcement. Law, thank you, that's what I was looking for. Law, law enforcement. Law yes. We, we law had the case. Harley, what was it Harley you defended? Uh, no, it was, it was it you defended the cop? Which one? It was, it was Emma. Yeah. Yeah. The cop in... Um, anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah. 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 Oh, um, hold on, Miss Wilson. Could you blame yourself? Like, could you be a part of like the rape culture? Like, uh, me? me? Yeah. Want, no, I'm saying like yourself. <laughs> you knew what I meant. Like, me. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. I could be. You know why? You know why? Because this is human sexuality class, and I don't talk about rape culture. When Tate brought it up the first time, I don't even want to hear nothing she got to say. Because I, I feel uncomfortable talking about rape culture. I don't want to hear what she got to say. Not a word. We ain't going to talk about rape culture. Period. So, yes, I could be 
that problem because I don't want to bring it up at all, period. So we're not going to discuss it. How's that? Go ahead, Michelle. What about pornography? Yeah. Okay. Media. Okay. Yeah. That'd be media. That'd be media. Entertainment. That'd be entertainment. Okay. So we're not talking about just the motion picture industry. We're not just talking about the music industry. People who make their living. Make their living. Make their living. How you should treat each other. Right. And I had mentioned advertising. Okay. Yeah. Advertising. Dancing. Dancing? Some of these new dances, like yiking. Have you seen that? <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> I just put it on for you. Okay. Rape culture. Rape culture. Now, <clears throat> sexual hold culture. on, guys. We have a situation now where, in this day and age with social media, where people are in both, where they post the rape on YouTube. This right here, this right here, Steubenville rape case in Ohio about three or four years ago where the individuals were taking pictures. Are you kidding me? They're taking pictures of somebody being violated to the point where they don't even know that they were raped until they saw television. They saw it on YouTube. Okay? That's a problem. Why are they, why are they able to do it? How can they feel so uncomfortable when they posted this on YouTube? Go ahead, Marsha. It's not surprising, though. I mean, they have... On the internet, there's videos. I forgot what channel that's called or something, but there's videos of people committing murders, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, bestcore.com. What is it? Bestcore.com. I don't know, but I, I know there's murders. But, but definitely, so but it's definitely. not surprising that they turn around and film, film or Mars, take pictures of a race. What does that say about society? We condone violence. We condone it. It's okay. So this is acceptable. They think it's cool. I, no, I, no, I don't think it's People I mean, that do it. I don't think you condone it, thrive on it. It's yeah. different. You condoning, you say it's okay. Thriving, you say you wanted to have it. Glorify it. Glorify it. Glorify it. That's it. Because it all boils down to power. They think it gives them power. Okay, so who is this? Is, it, gen is it gender specific? No. No, no, no. It, no it's violence on wrong. Because it can violence helps everyone. Violence helps politics because the politicians can say, Oh, you know, blah, 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 blah. Then it helps the media because it gets them ratings. Then it helps everybody else because then all the only person that you can go to to hear about it is from them. So then you develop your opinions based upon what they tell you. It, it, it's cycle. It did quite curiously. Go, go ahead, Dave. Oh, no, I was just going to say that it's, we glorify it and we live vicariously through that excitement we get, that thrill from watching. Ms. Wilson? Even if you think about like sites like World Star, people like waited for a fight to happen so they can like report it. Like World Star, like put out like off like social media. I think that like we as people like until like we grow up that we glorify like a fight or some type of like negativity because it kind of like makes us feel better or makes it like it's something else to work. Like not not worry about, but it. I don't know. I think it's disgusting. But I really don't know how to explain it. But I think it's just something that we do like either unintentionally or intentionally. Like we just look for negativity. Well, you know what? You explained it. And a lot of times we we accept it because we don't try to try to stop it. Or we don't talk about it. Just like just talking about this. We're really not supposed to discuss it. And that's the sad thing. Unless it's one of our loved ones. And then we want to talk about it. That when that wagon comes around, it's going to eventually get around to somebody that you care about. And then, what do you do? Do you just <coughs> stay silent? No, most people do. Yeah. You know, no, yeah, most people stay silent. This thing, rape culture, there's no rape culture. What are you talking about? You sound like you did your white person voice. <laughs> 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 
No, I did no. <laughs> 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 like no. That's not, that's not true. People have voices not to speak to color. No, it's not. <laughs> but, but I, I... That was me saying that, not him. <laughs> but this is the argument that people have. You have people that sit around and they talk about this. We're going to plot and we're going to strategize how we're going to do this. Let me, let me, we continue, okay. We talk about race culture. No, it's not just even though the lenses of the media. That's why this whole thing about men, and men are not supposed to discuss when they've been raped. I can use side minds, but, okay. The question that we ask ourselves is why? Now, if rape isn't, an acceptable practice, why do we blame victims? If it's not, why do we blame the victim? Okay, you guys basically have provided that information. Okay. You basically provided that information early. We blame the victims. You should have known. You shouldn't have been there. What were you wearing? What were you wearing? You know his reputation. Um, Margie, you mentioned the champ, Mike Tyson. And that, according to the president-elect, because he defended Mike Tyson in the media at that time, in 1992. Why was she in this room at 2 o'clock in the morning? That goes to show you what a worm he is. But this is not <laughs> something Professor Golden is making up. You go back and research it yourself. Okay. The question is, why was she in his room at 2 o'clock in the morning? That's what he said. That's why I used that 2 o'clock in the morning theory. Hmm? Okay. So this is something. So just, we had went, already went over this. Um, okay. Um, screen went blank. Hold on, folks. Hold on. Okay. Yes, it did. <laughs> now, I have a question. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, no. We're going to get to chapter 26, but um, Charlie, I want to say that one. Because there was three things. The second was, I can't use the phrase that you use. Okay. Um, how, how can I say this? Why do men want to be vaginal inspectors? Mm. Male gynecologists. Thank you. <laughs> okay, why would a man want to be vaginal inspectors? It's a way to help women. It's a way to help women. Why, Darian? Why can't they choose another profession? Like someone has to do it. Somebody has to do it? Someone has to do it. Like, personally, for me, I was raised by women, so if I was like, where I am, Hold on, guys. that's my way of giving back to women that have helped me grow so, so your argument is men that do that vaginal inspector, they give it back. Well, I wouldn't call myself, if I was an OBGYN, I wouldn't call myself a vaginal inspector. <laughs> well, wait a minute. I mean, I that's, what, no, Jerry, that's the term I came up with. Charlie said something else that I can't use. And she just said I can't use the term that she used. Okay. Why, Charlie? They want to know what term you use. Pussy inspector. Oh no. no, no, no. Oh. It's yeah, like, yeah. I can't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. but even if they're like looking at doctors, though, I mean, it oh, takes a lot of time and effort and money to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. I mean, if all you wanted was just to look at a her every day, like all you gotta do is. Like, there's so many easier ways to do that. Exactly. But it's a practice. I know, but what I'm saying is, I don't think you should be like. I don't know. Yeah, but doctors. You can see. Oh, yeah. like, okay. Like, yeah, it's somebody in power, right? That 
like would most likely rape you. So why wouldn't a doctor do it? Like you're someone in power, you're making bank, you're a doctor. Like, I'm just saying, like that's like a lot of time and energy energy out of your life mm -hmm. just for that one. Some people just have that thought. Don't get yeah, so oh, people no. commit their whole Do lives to the creep. She's <laughs> already <laughs> looked at it. <laughs> 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 she said there's different ways to look at it, but they're not looking at them in person then. Like other than a gynecologist, how many men are looking at twenty of them a day close up? I was going to ask how many people they look at it a day. So many. Okay, okay, get your water. Get your water. I should know. Why not? Hold on, hold on. Like we got 20 two, in the morning and then another 2 o'clock in the morning. No, 20 uh, in the morning. 20 in the morning? He's looking at 20 in the morning? 10 or 15 after lunch. I'm after lunch, you're 45? <laughs> Okay, hold on. Like she said, they got a lot of them lined up. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. Go ahead, Dave. Quite frankly, I think that's kind of a shit question. Uh, I would put that question on par with why was she there at 2 in the morning? Because I think you're very much implying that a bad thing will happen just because, uh, you know, X variable is fulfilled, that he is a male gynecologist, and she was there at 2 in the morning. I think I just think it's a shit question. So you don't think males should be? Uh, no, no, I think they absolutely should. They should be. I mean, yeah. just in the, the same way that a woman could be at yeah, two in the morning. I think it's very much uh, implying negativity. Yeah. That is undeserved. To be. Wait a minute, Miss Wilson, you guys have? Um, okay, so my brothers like, have like with, like female doctors, and so like they've gotten like their stuff checked obviously by like their female doctor. So like, why is that a problem for a man to be a gynecologist than for a woman to be a like all across doctor and be able to check a man's thing? And like my brothers feel like it's just like, well, they'd rather have a woman down there than a man down there. And like, I don't know. That's just my take on it. I don't think there's a problem going either way. It's an argument. Then. Go ahead, Alex. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, I just I don't think I think see when what you said it's just interesting because someone someone said that it takes a lot of time and effort to do all that but I but I will but when you have a certain mentality that that's what you want to do you'll take whatever steps you need to take to make sure that you can do it and if that and if you have to become a gynecologist in order to abuse women don't do that <laughs> but i'm saying but it's true no it's, no it's only a dog what i'm saying is this is that also at the same time if you want That's to so if, if that is the type of medicine that you're called for Right. That you got to call it for. Right. You like this is what this That's is what right. I want to do. This is what I'm interested in. I can do something to advance the field. It doesn't. It shouldn't. It doesn't matter. But, what, but to the other point, what I'm saying is, don't 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 knock the creep because people will do what they have to do in order to get their fix. I'm just saying that. Just yeah. go okay. off what you're saying. Hey, nah, we're gonna get back to this. Um, chapter 26. We're gonna get back to this. Um. Being well intentioned isn't good enough, and this is chapter 26. Something that is intentional, only thing that matters is the outcome. And so we had dealt with the blaming the victim theory. Okay, blaming the victim theory. Because there are many different layers to this. And what is it? The person who's the victim. And this goes back to Dave, your theory about deflecting. It's about deflecting. It's about putting the person who's the victim on trial. And even when, when a male is raped, and you saw the documentary, their behavior is put on trial too. Because the first question that comes up when athletes go through initiation, um, did anybody force you to play football? No. That's a volunteer sport. You sign up for it. So whatever happens to you, 
It's on you. <laughs> Basically, hey, 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 you think they just started, Miss Wilson, you think they just started doing those acts of meeting Mr. Broom? No. This has been going on for years, for decades. It's been going on. Now it's your turn. You got to pay the price. You got to pay the toll. And that's why a lot of people fear. So, it's what it is. What was she winning? She knew the character. Um, I'm going to go back to 1992, Margie, mm -hmm. with Mr. Trump defending Mike Tyson. It's all there. What was she winning? Why was she there? She knew the character. He's thin. She knew the character of the individual. In fact, when his attorney defended him, his claim was she knew the character of the individual. Plus, she put herself in that situation. Alex, you would ask that question earlier. We don't have no sympathy for her. She knew the character of the individual. So far. She knew what she was dealing with. That's cold. But that's how, if they don't say it, that's how they think. They're thinking it. It's the character of the individual. You know what you were doing? Should have been there. What were you wearing? But what did she do? And when she went to the restroom, I mean, that was really personal. When she went to the restroom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She removed a tampon that supposedly was still flowing, but maybe she thought she wasn't. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah I mean, she could have thought yeah. it was done with and just removed it for <laughs> yeah. what she, she considered necessary purposes, right. but that's not what they thought. Right. She, um... She's on trial too. And what's interesting, hold on guys. What's interesting is when we talk about these individuals, when they go to trial, they're they're on trial. When they take the perpetrator to trial, they're on trial. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's what it is. We're gonna try to dirty up the victim. Bottom line. I didn't say this was easy, I just said it was nice. But this is what we have. When you talk talking about rape culture, <coughs> this is discussion that you're dealing with. All these things. What was she wearing? Why was she there? Didn't she know the character of the individual? What's that phrase? No means yes. And yes means am. This is this is the mindset of rape culture. Can I share a story you shared with me about when you were in school and you, how these guys used to get together and they talked about how they were going to violate women? They already had. They already had, and they were laughing about it. What time is the game? That's the mindset. I asked a question years ago. You got a big game coming up. You got the conference championships, literally. You really do have the conference championships in college football coming up. Okay, you got the star player of the team. I mean, the guy, BMOC, big man on campus. Mm -hmm. The man, Heisman Trophy can. Then there's a uh, sexual assault. Notice the word I use? Sexual assault. Sexual assault. No, no, no. I didn't use that, even though there was penetration. Okay. But I didn't use that. I use sexual assault. But you know what it is. But the media is not going to, going back to that thing you, you, you talked about in your other class, Shannon. It's rape, isn't it? It's rape. Jerry, because you had your hand up, I'm asking you, is that player going to play? If he what? Is, is it okay? You got it. He's sexually assaulted. Oh, he's sexually assaulted? Yes. He, no, no, not should. He has to eat wood and blood. Most likely. Now, see, that's the problem. I mean, if they're using the word like sexual, if they're not saying that like, you raped her. That's correct. They use the sexual like, assault. And they're lightening it up. And they're lightening it up. Yeah. We got we to lighten the pot. We got to lighten the pot. We got to make it more presentable. Was it consensual? Yeah. It was consensual. No, it wasn't essential. She said no, right? 
Did she say no? So if she says no, what's that mean? Does that mean yes? No, no. I'm going to ask this question again. If she said no, does that mean yes? It does. By our definition or theirs? Theirs, you're talking about the perpetrator? Yeah. By, by the perpetrator. If, if, if a woman says no, if a man, because men be right, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an athlete on the team, and I got to go through initiation. I don't know what initiation is. They say you're going to meet uh, uh, Dr. Broom. I'm thinking that's, that's the president of the professor of uh, psychology. Hmm. Dr. Broom, where, where is the office at? <laughs> okay, is it on the third floor? Is it in this hall? When we're going to meet Dr. Broom, and it's about two other guys with me. Uh, I'm the running back, and he the safety. And we meet Dr. Broom, so we're going to Dr. Broom. We're fully dressed, so I'm thinking I'm going to meet the professor. Where's the professor Where's Dr. Broom at? This is Dr. Broom, and it's a stick. What the hell is that? Is it my fault? Is it my fault? What if I said, I said, no, I don't want this. You don't want to be on the team? I don't want to. Thank you, Charlie. That's the next question. I don't want to be. I don't want to go through this, Charlie. I want to be on the team, but I don't want to go through this. I'm saying no, right? Okay, so if I said no, is that legitimate? Is that you tell me it's not. It's not going to be respected unless you just say no to everything, including being on the team. Charlie, I'm saying no, I don't want to be violated. No means no. Right? No. I just said no. You telling me no don't mean no. That's what Shannon means. So, no really means yes. So is it my fault? You don't blame me? I get violated, you don't blame me? Yes, Dan? I was, I was just okay. shaking my hand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, no? Guess not. Yeah. No. Continue. I said 2 o'clock in the morning. We went over this. Now, we talk about the whole thing about alcohol. What's the, what, what? She deserved it. Hold on, folks. What, what, what are we talking about? She deserved it? Go ahead, Derek. Go ahead, Derek. Okay, so, when, um, let's talk to um, the drunk thing. Yes. So, I had a situation when I was like 15, 16, um, where this older guy, um, I was really drunk at a party, and I blacked out. And I woke up like with all my clothes off in some bed with like him on top of me. So, <clears throat> and for the longest, I was convinced that it was my fault because everybody told me because I was drunk and I blacked out that obviously like I asked for this. This was my choice. I was the one that was dancing around having fun at a party that was supposed to be with my friends. And so like I even didn't refer to it as like I didn't. Ref I said he did suck stuff to me for the longest, and then I said sexual assault, and then it's become recently like I just it, it he raped me like he, and so I just I thought for the longest that it was my fault, but like I was drunk, but I was also underage, so you should have known no, and like if I'm too drunk to the point where I'm blacked out, like that means no, like it's just no. Uh -huh. I mean I know somebody's not going to take it as that. And that's why it's scary, but like. Okay. I would say, based on, based on what you said, we talked about creep shots. Um, Alice, you remember that story we talked about in the state of, one of the states in the Confederacy? Georgia. Georgia, where if, now don't put logic to what I'm about to say. Okay, this is a public place. This is a public house. It's public. I got a camera, and I go, and take pictures of under a woman's dress. Well, yeah, you remember? Okay. I can't be prosecuted. Can't be, can I be prosecuted? Because 
their defense, when the Supreme Court came back and they voted 63, that was the vote. 63 of the Georgia Supreme Court that it's a public space and that person has a right to take pictures of a woman's skirt. When you break his phone. How many of those people were women? I don't know. I don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> it didn't surprise no, the, 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 the uh, vote didn't surprise me at all. Okay, it didn't surprise me. It really did. But the idea was they, their defense was it was a public space. Okay. A public skirt is a public space. It's a public space. It is. Okay. <laughs> Miss Clark, <laughs> you, you're right there. I'm right here. If I got a camera, this is public. You don't own this, I don't own it. But you're it's probably like, it's her fault. She should wear a skirt. I don't own this. I don't own this. Wait a minute. Hold on. That is the space that yeah. you're in. The space. You don't own oh, that the space. space right. of yeah. the space. Yeah, and there's negative space. I do not own it. I think it's a negative space. It takes a break. It's I can see someone taking my image, but they can take my picture without my They can take your picture without your set. As long as they don't use it. You know, Ms. McCray talking about breaking somebody's wrist. Extend your arm. You can't get get to me, I so I can take a picture of you. You can't do nothing about it. Well, and that's and, and if take, they actually do hurt them, then they will file assault. They will file assault. Thank you. If so somehow, you can't. If you can't somehow touch me by taking. He didn't touch you. He no, came actually, right here. He was well within his rights. He was rights. well within his rights, according to the mindset of Georgia State Supreme Court, mm -hmm. and they could take your picture. Mm -hmm. And if you got on the skirt, if you got on the skirt, there's nothing you can do. Go ahead, Ms. Clark. No, he got the pic the cameras um, adjustable where he can take the pictures just standing from here to here. He don't have to stick the thing up yourself. No, that's more sophisticated than that. Go ahead, Ms. Clark. Well, I wanted to compare this to something. Guys, hold on, guys. Go ahead. People taking pictures of children in, like, playgrounds or, like, at the pool, yeah. pool shower. I agree. And that's that's not okay either. That's a public space. That's but, true. But, it's legal. but because I'm a woman and whether because or not I'm woman. an adult, suddenly it's okay. I don't understand. That. Now, they did, he was arrested. He filed a lawsuit. Took it to the Georgia Supreme Court and won the case. 6-3 to three with the vote. I don't agree with it, but I'm just saying that this was justification or try to justify his behavior because it's a public space. But if like a woman went and tried to take a picture down a man's pants, that would be shut down so quick. Because that's weird and invasive and disgusting. Invasive but because a woman is wearing a skirt, it's mm -hmm. suddenly public space. So if he's wearing yeah, loose basketball shorts, we can just take pictures all we want, Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Or the whole. Oh, I'm just saying. Okay. Um, folks, let's get back to this. Deserve it. <laughs> That's extremely powerful because the whole thing about deserving it, and I was sharing with you when I was visiting. Council asked me to come from the college professor and sit around and listen to a group of sex offenders in a circle. And you heard one after one saying, well, she deserved it. And the counselor asked, well, you know, your victim, how old was your victim? Oh, she was three. She was four. She enticed me. Yes, she deserved it. She deserved it. Because she enticed them? Yeah. Three-year-old. Four-year-old. You don't, don't don't put light to what I'm saying. I know. This is the mindset of this population. They feel what's the word we use, Charlie? Entitled to do what they want. They're entitled. No, so it don't matter what age. Wait, Margie. It don't really don't matter what age. It don't matter. Do you know? Say your name. Well, so uh, I was going to say, thing. then in that case, if I was their, the victim's parent, I would be entitled to skin them alive and castrate them and do whatever all I wanted. I'm pretty sure that many people would agree with you. Because that's disgusting with three, four-year-olds. Well, well, 
just disgusting. The, the, the well, any age, weird. but I'm saying yeah, three, four year olds. That's yeah. not but, just that's not just raping somebody at that point. That's taking their life from them. That's taking away their innocence. It's a life sentence. They're yeah. free. They don't know how to entice or what even that, that would be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but they have a memory, so you're taking away their innocence. Well, yeah, which is irreplaceable. Well, I understand that. But the, the person that is the perpetrator, they don't care about, they all they're thinking about is themselves. Okay, so they're not thinking that that's a three-year-old, that's a four-year-old, I'm going to do what I'm doing. To their mind, it's okay. And in and, and, and their mind, they feel entitled. And there are a lot of people. That's why this is up here. I put things up here. You know, yes, we talk about being drunk. That's the thing. But in their mind, she deserved it. You deserve this. That's that's a sick individual. So if I'm walking down the street mm -hmm. at three o'clock in the morning in a well lit time? area, three in, three it in, it be four in, in a well lit area, yeah. whatever, mm -hmm. um, fully dressed. Dress. Jacket is zipped up to here, right. etc. Hair pulled back, right. not looking so attractive or whatever. And somebody decides to run up on me and rape me. Then it's my fault because I was walking down the street at well, 3 a.m. Why were you here at 3 in the morning? That's the I don't know. Pack of cigarettes? Where we, no, I mean, no, no, you no, know. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, where are you coming from? Yeah, where are you coming from? Then they say, why were you there? From home, going to the store, getting a pack of cigarettes. Um, sure. Or three, you can do it on my way back. Why yeah. Huh? Because so I want my cigarette. <laughs> so your cigarettes are more important than your safety? No. That's what they would ask. That's what they would ask. Yeah, that's what they would ask. And then, and then you're just like, and then the person's just like, what? Yeah, and then they stutter, and then they, and then they just suddenly destroy. Because okay. then, like, how could you think that that's, that's what it possibly is. I was trying to do? Yeah. Well, it's like this. Should women wear makeup? Should they not wear makeup? Because if they don't wear makeup, they might not get violated. That's not true. Most men prefer women without makeup. Damn, you blow my theory, Martin. <laughs> Do you think makeup makes a difference? Could you could you not make yourself attractive? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Miss Clark. Well, my thing is, people that rape others, they're going to do it regardless of the victim's circumstances, but there is always going to be a question or a reason as to why the victim was raped. There's always going to be something that's come up, but there's never any like excuses or preferences for the rapist. Regardless of whether or not you're wearing makeup, the victim will be asked why were you wearing makeup, but it won't matter to the person that did the rape. Right. See, see, yeah, see, see, that thing up there that she deserves it, trust me. More than likely, a lot of guys who do this, they believe it. They believe, they believe it. And their entitlement, they're entitled. Charlie, Charlie was telling real stories of discussions where guys talked about this is what they do. And they plot, plan, and carry out. Thing is, they were sitting in an open area. This is at high school. Mm -hmm. This is during lunchtime in an open area right in front of the lunchroom where everyone walking by can hear what they're saying. They're not keeping their voices down. They're saying, Don't you hate that bitch? Yeah, I fucked her up last weekend. They're saying openly, admitting that they raped this girl. They got her drunk at a party, and they took advantage of her in so many words. They're unafraid to admit these things in public, where anyone can hear them. Yes. Nothing will probably happen to them for saying it. No, nothing did happen to them. Go ahead, Dave. I do have to wonder, though, with a high schooler, there is a mighty good chance that it could just be a bragger's tale. That nothing really happened and they're bragging just to get cred that they did it. But and they're so that? okay with saying it because it never happened. 
in real life. I was just saying that, you know, it didn't happen if somebody does call them out. Okay. What did you just say? I said, why is that cool? Why is that, that cool? Like I said earlier, they're glor it's glorified. We have to glorify the conquests. The kills is um, some of the guys I know used to say the kills. Nobody wants to hear about a nice, fine, happy little relationship. They have to make it dirty. They have to make it something worth bragging about. Worth having that cred, but if you, but Dave, if you have to get a person intoxicated to have intimate, that's not intimate. That's the wrong word. Have violate her. What's it say about the oh, character? I'm not saying the person. No, no, no. Person. I'm just asking a question. Okay. Yeah, I'm just asking a question. That says a lot. Just to even have great culture. That says. Speaks volumes. Where we at? And in case that. anyone is wondering, he did in fact rape her. Okay. I was hoping that he did. I was hoping, that, yeah. yeah, no. Yeah. When I heard it, I was hoping it was true because I knew who they were talking about. But. See, the thing is, folks, that the most powerful thing up here, yeah, we talk about a person. Just see it. She deserved it. It's no big deal. And when I when I make the phrase, what time is the game? That's the mindset. I don't agree with it because it needs to be dealt with. We need to send a message. Now I have my own theory about what message should be sent. Okay. You prosecute this one, then this one here. And then what's unique thing, folks, and I was looking forward to this. The University of Tennessee was supposed to have a trial of two athletes this summer. That trial never took place because they set it on a court. Drake Bowles, you can research him. He basically helped a victim a sexual assault. I think it was a sexual assault. It might have been a rape. I'm not sure, folks. But he helped her go to the hospital because two of his teammates had violated her. You talked about this for a semester. Yeah. Okay. Well, and I shared with you guys Tennessee was supposed to, was supposed to be a trial. He kicked him out of the Yeah, he left and went to the University of uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee to Chattanooga. But what's interesting is the coach Bobby Jones, he said Trey, Dre, Dre Bowles was a coward and a snitch. This was the coach that said this. <laughs> And you wonder why I make the phrase, what time is the game? On Thursday, we're going to finish this up. I think we might. There's a lot of other layers to this and some other things. Because we got to deal with political correctness. Perfect timing, folks. Okay. You guys have hope. In your canvas, notice that you got group work, you got expose, you got Midterm, you got stimulated intellectual. You add those points up, you balance them off. The syllabus, that's where you stand right now. You got one more. Next week is winning time. Winning time is the final exam. I didn't say losing time, I said winning time. You'll come in here, you're going to have your business now. Hold on, guys. I put something in Canvas that if you can't take the final exam at the time it's supposed to, you can take it early. But you have to come to Red Mountain. Or on Wednesday at the time. And I put that in there. Or you can take it earlier in the day with me at SC24. Okay. Take it because you got things you got to do. Yes, Shannon. We're going to review on the 6th. Thing. That was my question. We're going to review on the 6th. And I put that in Canvas too. At what time we're going to review. Okay. The last Tuesday, we dealt with. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Joseph, that guy over there in Europe who locked that site. Oh, yeah. Pritzel. Yeah, Pritzel. Yeah, Mr. Pritzel. That applies here. Yeah. See, 
No amount of prison time will satisfy him. No. Life, he's going to die in prison anyway. Release him to the community. That's where I feel. That's what you do. Release him to the community. Let the community find out. Mm-hmm. Hey, it's a true story. Casey Anthony was supposed to, you remember Casey Anthony, right? Mm-hmm. She was supposed to come to Arizona. When some of the boys found out, they were waiting on her. She went somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Okay? That's all I need to say. We believe in that community justice. Okay. Yeah, but then we stoop to a lower. We do. You know, we're no because that's true. We resort to violence. That's true. We don't want to do that. We sure don't. We have to but you know what? <laughs> you tell somebody, and I tried to explain that to some people, and they were like, "Uh uh-uh. uh, yeah. I'm going to jail." Right. If they mess with my child. That's when I had it. Um, that's when all the boys go out, all the degrees and everything go out the window. Okay? All, all, the, all the professionalism go out the window when you're messing with your baby. Okay? People that you thought was nice, I was told this. Okay? People that I thought was nice, they were like, look. No. Okay, guys, the snowbirds are here. It's chilly outside. Make sure you dress warmly. Don't uh, medicate yourself to stay warm, meaning sucking down the suds or the salt. Take care of yourself and peace too.